everyone for coming again today. We have Ms. Sharon Loving. She's an LCSW. She's worked for Compass Hospice since 2002. That has become her forever home. She supervises support services, but also provides patient and family care decisions and end of life planning. And she's gonna speak on how hospice can help facilitate those conversations. Thank you all for coming um, and good afternoon. Um, happy to be here. Um, I want to talk a little bit to you all about what um, conversations that you might be having with your own families um, and what hospice does actually to help facilitate that as well too. The Compass Regional Hospice does many things. I think all of us know that it's end of life, um, but we also do a lot of grief work as well too. But along the way, um, what when people come to us, they hopefully have already had some of these very serious conversations with their families. And those end of life conversations are not easy to have. Um, I, I have two documents here and I just gonna briefly just talk a little bit about these because this will hopefully help you um, understand what some of those decisions need to be made, some of those conversations that need to be have had with your family members or with your friends. Um, I think most of us have heard the word advanced directives. It simply means that you will have said in advance what you want done at the end. And I think most of us want to have some control of that. So you are letting and directing people and letting them know exactly what you want. I think that's vital because what we know as we near death, we want as much control as possible. And if we have not had those conversations with our loved ones, they may be doing things that we don't necessarily want. Now, advanced directives is a form that it's the what if. What if I am in a car accident? What if my heart stops? What if I have terminal cancer? I call that the what if document. So that's predicting what you would want in case something happens. When people come to us in hospice, many people have already had that conversation. They have already in advance said what they want. One of the most important things I think for all of us is to say who we want to represent us if we cannot speak for ourselves. Now sometimes that's called a health agent a medical power of attorney. How many of you have advanced directives now? Great. Preaching to the choir for some people, but that's okay. It's a tough conversation to have. And what I would say to all of us is if you have one or if you're thinking about having one, please take the courage to have that discussion with your family and friends and say, if I can't speak for myself, this is who I would like to have someone speak for me. Now some people choose that to be a family member. Some people don't want any family members responsible for that. They may choose a lawyer. They may choose a friend. But make sure you have that conversation with them. Be open with them. This is your choice. And so I think it's important that we take that step and do that. Now if you already have one, you may want to revisit that because people don't want to talk about those things. The sicker we are, the worse things that begin to happen to us, we keep, keep putting things off. You may have ha had that document already done, but now you've even forgotten where you put it. That would be my case. So people may not know where that document is. The other important thing to do is to make sure that your group of family or friends knows where that document is. You should have a document filed with your doctor, the hospital, and also wherever your original copy is, somebody should know where that is well too. Just common sense. But when you panic and things happen, you forget those things. So have that conversation ahead of time. Does that make sense? The other form, and I'm just going to briefly talk about this, is the MOLST form. The MOLST form, it's, it's actually M-O-L-S-T, and it stands for Maryland Medical Orders for 
life-sustaining treatment. This will be the last document that will direct your professional caregivers. This document has to be signed by a physician. Everyone in hospice has this. This is now. This is the events are happening right now. We know what's happening. And so this document has to be reviewed. What happens is we use the advanced directive, if, is there, if there is one, and now we look at the most form. And we talk about, have there been changes? And again, we ask what needs to be done. That document will give you the do not resuscitate order, if you want that. That document will say, I don't want to go back to the hospital, or I do want to go back to the hospital. That document will also say, I want IV um, fluids or nutrition. So it is a very medical term that needs to be talked to with, with your doctor, talk it over with your family. And again, don't be afraid to speak up for yourself. Don't be afraid to have your health agent in on all of this conversation. This is what I want. In hospice, that's exactly what we do. And a lot of us social workers, that's what our role would be. Is this what you want? They're not easy discussions to bring up. They're very difficult, but I think they're vital at this point. Um, end of life conversations can mean things like, for one more time, I want to visit Ocean City. For one more time, I want to do this, I want to do that. Speak up. Don't be afraid to voice your opinion about what you want. Let your health representative help you. Hospice is all about living. I know today's topic was, a, was actually live well, end well. That's what we want. Don't be afraid of hospice because hospice really is all about living all about living until that day. No one knows what's going to happen when the day comes. If you have already spoken up and said, these are my wishes, this is what I want, you can put that baby to bed. You don't have to worry about that. Thank you. I love the five wishes because I think it's very simple. It really identifies five important things that people really want to have, let their, their family know about. Uh, but the first one I think is probably the most important and that is who you want to represent you as your health agent. And then the, and this, the good thing about this document really is that it does not have to be notarized in the state of Maryland, in most states actually, um, but it has to be witnessed. What I would also like to say is that, you know, in hospice, it's patient slash family. Um, it's so important because I think that as a social worker, we work with caregivers and family along the way, along part of that journey, providing grief support, um, looking at the future if they're able to, and just really trying to reach out to them where they are, um, and just dealing with what's happening on their terms. But also in hospice, the, the, the support continues afterwards. So it's a, actually the hospice itself, our hospice, as all hospices, will provide 13 months of support, whether it's grief support through individual counseling, uh, mailings and different type of memorials, different workshops, especially around holidays. Um, but um, groups, just groups in, in general of support groups. What our hospice does also, and we're very proud of this, and I think all of the hospices, most of the hospices do this, is that we also provide a community grief program. So even though you may not have even had hospice services yourself, we reach out to the community for other losses as well. And so that's what our Hoping Healing Center at the Compass of Regional Hospice is that's what we're all about. So even if any of you have not had hospice services, but you're struggling with with something, with some loss, no matter what it might be, you can call us and we'd be glad to reach out to you and provide some support because it's all about the journey of all of us, isn't it? Whether it's a person who's actually in hospice services who looks like they're going to die soon, but it's the, it's the family and the friends just as important.